My friends, this is Calpun Piso. Now, you know we create God and believe on faith with our brains. The mechanisms, neurons, synapses, all the genes, all the mutations, everything. But we are crazy apes. We're all crazy. Except uh, atheists are mentally healthy, which is also crazy, <laughs> because all crazy mutated primates, um, is aware. Some probably not, but is aware of all these emanations for our brains that we can actually change. Uh, religious psychotics is uh, people that have really uh, is innate in all of us, but they cannot get rid of the fantasies. And no matter how much educated they get, they still have the problem with the brain. So they become very religious, and they believe in all these um, uh, uh, completely rational things, despite education. And they go to school, and they have these feelings of God and whatever it is, conspiracy theories and all that, because it produces a good feeling in the brain, and it dissipates the reality of life. It's bad when you have to start thinking that ah, we get old, we decompose, we will die, we have to work, we have to breathe, we have to take our dogs out, we have to put up with our wives, our kids, and all the rest of the problems. Uh, somebody's going to sue us because uh, they... Uh, they broke a leg in our yard, and then you have to have house repairs, and then all of a sudden you went, your business went belly up. But um, these are realities of life. And then you have pimple in your ass, and you have all these hemorrhoids that bother you, and then you might catch a cold, and then you have this virus, or you know, this little, um, you have to go through a biopsy because then you might have cancer. I mean, your eyes start failing you, you start losing your hair. This is reality. So what do you do? You invent an afterlife. You invent an outer reality, which it would be a belief in conspiracy theories, in aliens, in gods, and all these quantum things in your head and all this stuff. But the fact is, we're nothing but crazy apes. <laughs> this fact. Well, now... I'll be able to, uh, you know, I can talk about uh, my psychosis, called put piso psychosis, which I believe that I'm, you know, from a different planet. I'm always projected from one of the uh, inside of the moon of Titan. That's what my fellow beings are. We are beings of silicon base and methane. So anyway, uh, we are between the existing and the non-existence, in other words, from an entirely different dimension. And when my father uh, placed the uh, uh, sperm into my mother's egg fertilizer, in that particular moment with DNA everything merges, ah, that's when I became projected. I took over the cells of the organization on the blastosis. Of course, I was dormant. And um, the baby was born, 1942. And of course, it was dormant. But at five, six years of age, all these dreams and all these things start making, making him... Um, making him uh, realize that he was not from here. The body was from here. Everything is human, of course, but not the controller. The six-dimensional process inside the brain, which is, you know, you would call it a soul, but it's not just a soul. Soul is air in our lungs, but in this case, it was projections. It was uh, right into the essence of molecules and uh, uh, antiprotons and of the particular body, because of these bodies are, you know, the way they are formed. But I start writing different things with uh, different things all the time. These real weird symbols. And I keep writing them all over. I didn't know where they were. It actually because I'm not from here, friends. I was projected. I went to study the, the civilization of the earlings using this body to live in the planet. And Titania or Titan, 
my world where I was projected is circling Uranus and it's full of methane you know it creates floodlands so Christians I hate to tell you I was projected I am truly the grand demon the Antichrist here I am using this human body called Pulpiso so I'll be your worst nightmare the rapture is about to come so <laughs> it begins so anyway now Christians know the Christ psychotics know who I am I am a projection that exists and it doesn't exist I am what I am a six-dimensional process projected from Titania circling your anus and this projection is very nice because when we die aha when the humans die the impression of Titania which is full of methane actually expresses itself every time you fart you have gas coming out of your ass but it's below it's not above because uh, I know that you believe that you create thoughts with the and the brain uh, you know your ass is in the brain well Christ psychotics I'm sorry to tell you we are evolved mutated primates that decompose and create methane the natural gas of that composes all of us entities in projections of Titania a moon circling Uranus here are the facts now friends my mentally healthy in other words atheist friends I just created this fantasy Christians will believe it's true because they believe the resurrected zombie is reality they believe everything I'm saying is a fact and they look into my eyes and they can see I'm really the Antichrist psychosis <laughs> here are more facts as you can see all this fantasies are created in my brain but see this fact is that I'm not from this planet uh, from uh, from Titan you know beings are you know silicon based and are very different and they don't have they're not humanoid at all and this idea that they can be projected to different planets you know at um, uh, projections faster than the in actuality in quantum uh, mechanics faster than the speed of light the universe uh, uh, speed limit like Einstein's uh, Einstein said but see this idea that I was projected and I came up with this idea when I was younger because I didn't know about everything in the universe and I needed something besides the zombie Jesus belief which is and really didn't make that much sense uh, so you know that was infected um, all my family and the society the country and everything but if it's something there makes but I wanted to have a fantasy so I began to to tell myself that I was just from the stars but in reality we are we are stardust and I think that's rooted in our brains as a matter of fact we were we, we were created for uh, four billion years ago by uh, by uh, the solar system was created by a collision of star explosion of star create this gas compress it you have the solar system the earth and a series of, of accidents they call it the gold lilax system in other words everything is at the same time uh, everything coalesce at the right time at the same moment at the same instance and everything is like that and all of a sudden you create this idea this life in other words the the um, 
the brain that is be able to be aware, which is matter of matter, you know, atoms and all, aware of, of his own existence. And that, of course, is us, a mutated, evolved primate, so that the best defense he has is creating, you know, uh, this uh, fantasy of God and angels and afterlife with the brain. So anyway, so I created a fantasy. Then it makes you feel good. So anybody can do what I'm doing. Anybody can create a fantasy. But create your own, not adopt somebody else's. That becomes, then you become a religious psychotic because you are accepting somebody else's beliefs or religion or whatever it is, or conspiracy theories or whatever nonsense it is as true. And you get, and you, you're not original because you adopt somebody else's ideas. You get in somebody else's infection, a, a, neurolog, a neurological infection, a psychosis of God belief. Why not to be original and invent your own? You can discover great things if you invent your own fantasy. Because all these religious beliefs, after, you know, life after death, and all that uh, creates uh, dopamine, serotonin, and oxytocin, these neurotransmitters that make you feel good. It's like a drug. It's like if you take, uh, if you're depressed and you have antidepressed uh, medicines, uh, um, cipracidone and, and soloft and different ones, and they affect your brain and they make you feel good. It's just almost like, like taking peyotl and a nice beer. <laughs> if you're depressed and you take peyotl and all that, you feel much better. But what about if you are depressed and you and you drink drink a cappuccino? It's not going to make you feel better. You're going to be like this. So that is what you have to keep in mind. We create the mind, our thoughts, with our brains. Keep that in mind. You don't have to take a neurology courses or anything. You just have to be reasoning between fantasy, you have to navigate the planet in a world between fantasy and reality and with the five senses. So we have the five senses to navigate the planet and these five senses can be uh, can be damaged or can be altered and don't don't trust them all the time, you know. Five senses, you know, you have a smell, you have hearing, you have touch, you have sight and uh, taste and, you know, if you, if you, if you're sick, and then you lose your taste. Remember, you have a temperature, a fever, you, it doesn't taste too, too well. Uh, you hear these, these things. If you're sick sometimes, you know, you might hear this, these weird noises in your, you know, all that. And then the eye, if you're myopia, you know, and all that, you don't see that well. You have astigmatism. And the, so this, this sensor, the five sensors that we have, they, they, they are distorted and they are malfunctioning. This is exactly what happened with the anomaly, the psychosis we are all born with is the belief, the God belief, the religious psychosis, the, the abstract psychosis uh, that could actually make us extinct. I mean, it's been great because you get imagination, you can create things, you know, from six dimensional processes into, you know, the, the, the idea of thought. And then we create it in the four dimensional. In other words, you, you think of a, of a cube, for instance, they have three sides that are black, and the other three sides uh, are, are white with little dots in it. Well, that's an idea. Six-dimensional, dimensional thought. In the moment that I take a piece of wood and create that cube, and I make a six by six, and I paint it and all that, then it becomes four-dimensional. It has length, width, depth, and also time. That so you see, so from the dimension, the thought dimension, into this. And uh, this is what something that we have as, as a mutated evolved primates. But we must keep in mind, we create all that with the brain. Don't have a tunnel vision. If you have, you know, if, if you get a profession, you study any particular field. You know, uh, you study psychology, you can study dentistry, you can study uh, um, geology, archaeology, architecture, astrophysics, whatever. Uh, then when you see that and you have to be aware that in the moment that you study a particular field or you want to be a concert pianist, you have to devote your time, you have to have tunnel vision to, to be good at it, see? But then you are focusing on that, you're developing a tunnel vision and then you cannot see the rest. Nobody can see everything. Nobody can know everything. But if we are aware of that, just awareness, 
that we acquire technology, then we'll be okay. Because then we have to be aware that we are evolved, mutated primates that create gods, supernatural ideas like that with the brain. As long as you know that, you'll be sane. You're atheist, lacking belief in the nonsense. And um, in the moment that you're not aware of that, you don't keep that in mind. And many atheists, brilliant minds, they don't keep that in mind. They don't say it. They don't use themselves as an example. You never see Dawkins, Harris, Hitchens, all those people using themselves as an example. You know, uh, telling them, say, hey, uh, I'm an evil mutated primate. Uh, they have white hair. Look, you know, my hair is all white now. I'm going to get all wrinkled. You know, if you have big ears like I do, you know, hey, you know, look at this. But, hey, they work, they have perfect working order. And since they're like this, I can pick up all these sounds that people with flat ears cannot. The same thing, you have big nose and all that. Oh, you know, they think of all the possibilities. The looks are irrelevant. irrelevant. Forms follow function. Remember that. You know, it's something, if, if you have a car, for instance, that uh, you say, well, round wheels, that is so passe, it's not that good. I like a car with square wheels. It sits better and it's nicer. But guess what? It looks beautiful, but it doesn't work correctly. Keep that in mind. So, invent your own your own God. Believe that you're from a different planet. As long as you know that it's an act and that you invented it, that it's not necessarily true, 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 then you're okay, that you're an atheist. In the moment that you start believing in gods and angels, you, you believe that uh, you're hearing voices and you're really truly hearing voices from the supernatural, then you're a Christ psychotic, then you're infected with God belief. Keep that in mind. The brain creates God and anything, and you can create anything you want. As long as you remember that, you'll have the happiest life ever. There is no God, there is no afterlife, there is no sin, there is no all that rest of nonsense. Uh, we can create that with the brain. What happens when we die? Very simple. We, our bodies will collapse, our air of our lungs, the soul will come out, and then all the, the our our brains begin to die. You know, no, you know, and you see all these vibe, all these things. You might see all these these things, and you know, a white tunnel and all these, these things, like a scintillating a stoma, a scotoma, for instance, that some people have. And all this, you feel all that in the brain. You start seeing these things, and of course, if you happen to bring you back to life, then you, you know, say, oh, I was dead for five minutes, and I saw God, and I saw all the family. It's your memories going back, and all these activities. As usual, when you see the white tunnel, everybody has that. It's not a big deal. You know, but then if you actually become dead, then all that keeps and all the neurons start beginning to die. Everything dying, dying, dying. And all the universes in the brain began dying, dying. All you, all your cells, everything began dying, dying, dying. You, you become, and then you have the rigorous mortis. And many times you have a reaction like this or a reaction like that, and your body's the, and then all the bacteria start going, you know. And then if they leave you there in the desert, <laughs> Then you have a, a series of insects that come around. There's this particular flies that come around. It's, it's, it's called the Grand Sarcopha. And it happens. They syringe with it, you know, and they go in there and start laying eggs, and you have maggots. And, and of course, the gas in your body, mm, all this start blowing, giving you, produce this gas. And then, of course, your sphincter that you have, like the mouth will be like, like that. And then the ass, you know, the sphincter in your butt it will open up. So all the gas, all the, everything is coming out from there, you know. So it happened to all of us. <laughs> yes, guys, no life after death. This is, the, this is what's happening after we die. And all these bacteria start creating more generations of bacteria. And they start eating and making you, the whole body decompose. And the, the time goes by and you, hey, if you're in the desert, you might be preserved. Like it happened in ancient Egypt, you know, everybody thought, oh, my God, you know, mommy over there naturally for a mommy, all that is, oh, you know, it's life after death, and then they learn how to preserve it. That's the reason they, 5,000 years ago, it's your life after death, because nobody, nobody knows. Now we know what life after death is. Is bacteria eating our, our remains, producing generation and generation and generation. And then, you know, two, three, four million years after that, and we lay in the desert like that, hey, 
what's going to happen? A little bone remains there, another thing remains there, and all that little part, of, you know, you know, and everything. They might find your bone and say, who's this? A little part of the uh, teeth on place, of my gold teeth in there. What is this? A gold tooth? What is going on? <laughs> See? So that's the reality of life, people. So I hope you enjoy this. There is no God. There is no life or death. If you believe in God, you are a theotard and you have a problem with your brain. And I think all the atheists ought to know this. And I don't tell it like it is. Don't be scared. Grow some balls. You know, atheists like Dawkins, Harris, and all that. Tell it like it is. If you believe in God, you have bizarre mythological beliefs, as Dr. Sapolsky clearly said, and you believe in all that to be reality, all this magic stuff, and you are educated in the 21st century, you have a problem with your brain. You suffer from religious psychosis, face psychosis, or a form of schizophrenia. A schizophrenic type disorder, a schizotypy, which is very mild form of schizophrenia, but it can become full blown, and then you'll be like, Koresh or Doe of Heaven's Gate or the guy that blow the Oklahoma building. You have the morons that are uh, killing doctors in abortion clinics, and uh, you know then you have uh, uh, filthy people like um, like Bachman and uh, you know the rest of people. They had, they had no blow up, but at any time they can come up like I shoot people and kill witches and atheists and everybody don't agree with them, and, uh, and then even cause a war. Because imagine Bush, the Christ psychotic imbecile. Look at what he did. He invaded the wrong country. He invaded Iraq. <laughs> they didn't attack us and got rid of Saddam Hussein. And the Iranians loved it. Al-Qaeda loved it. And then took over Iraq. And what happened after nine years? We lost. Thanks to a Christ psychotic imbecile that was Bush. The Iranians are very happy. And we lost all those lives because of this Christianity, the Christ psychosis, the deluded men that believe that uh, Jesus Christ was his favorite philosopher. He got appointed by God to be president. We have to get rid of lunatics in government. If you believe in God, you are not allowed to be, be, uh, to be in government or to have a license of anything. You're not allowed to be doctor or, or te teacher especially. Never. This Christ psychotic believe believing mental institutions. You don't teach children. You corrupt their brains. That's the only way we can save the planet and control the population. One child per family. No, uh, no uh, saving life when the person is, uh, is like 90 years old or 85 or something like that. No, they have their life. So the, we have to keep them happy. And then if they want to die, allow them to die and all that. But uh, that's the way it should be. It's the only way to save the planet. Otherwise, we'll, be, we'll become extinct. Back to the old. See, I put this in my mouth. And as a good mentally healthy atheist that I am, I engraved my family coat of arms. A family that originated from... <laughs> Basically about Hungary, Germany, and Transylvania, where the Christian Count Dracula was. I'm just a baron. Then uh, it has three birds, three black birds, and the moon in my coat of arms. I, I am the Antichrist. Hopefully, four million years from now, it will be found in Pace de Orum.